Okay, we are started. Okay, everybody, welcome um, to uh, Teaching as a Profession, part one. So there's, there's two of these classes. I'm hoping what will happen is you stick with me through this class and this block, and the next block you take the next course. Um, and so you get your, uh, what's called a CTE concentrator in this area. Um, but that is up to you, but hopefully you, you will stay with me. Just so you know, this lesson will be uh, recorded for learning purposes. Uh, I'll introduce myself in just a second here. Uh, a couple things. Um, one is we're going through the class. I want to make sure we have a good virtual class set extra uh, expectations. Um, make sure you're following along with the Nearpod lesson. If you're unable to get into the Nearpod lesson, I am putting it in the chat just one more time. That's okay. Um, I know some of you guys do it on a phone or something like that. Just follow along, respond to questions and instructions the first time, and you can do that just through the chat tool. Um, and then also use the chat tool respectfully and appropriately uh, as we go through here. Okay, uh, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over careers in education. Um, but before I do so, I'm gonna introduce myself and then introduce the class since this is our first time kind of meeting together. Uh, so my name is uh, Mr. Hancock, I guess, or Zach, <laughs> Zach Hancock. Um, so I've been uh, teaching at Utah Virtual Academy, I think for six plus years, maybe a little bit longer than that. So I love the online education um, there. I do have a young family. Uh, this is my wife, Christy. She actually teaches first grade for Utah Virtual Academy as well. And then I also have three kids that are growing up. Um, Brooklyn, who is my oldest, she's actually taking um, part-time classes at, at Utah Virtual Academy. And then I also have my son, Kaysen and Kaylor. And so that's us and our, uh, don't forget our little dog down here, Trix. She's actually not that little. She's pretty big. So a Bernie doodle, if you wanted to know. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do, uh, let me go through this class, just kind of show you how it works, that kind of stuff. Uh, I, If you want to, I'd love for you to join me every week here at Thursday, or is it Thursday 115? Um, we're only probably going to go for about 30 minutes or so. And, um, but what we're going to do is, uh, if you can't make it, uh, this class is set up to just take off with it. Okay. Um, so somebody says they've already, uh, almost completed everything in the class. That's completely fine. Right. If you want to go ahead, complete these, uh, all the courses and that kind of stuff, that's your, your main goal, right. Is to complete it, um, and get your grade, get your credit, that kind of stuff. Uh, if you like to go at a more slow pace and you want to join me in, in live class, uh, I'll be here. I do give hints in class and stuff like that for um, your quizzes, that kind of stuff that you may struggle with. So that might be uh, there. On the welcome announcements, I am going to post like this video recording. So if you happen to miss a class, you'll have that. Um, if you're going to be jumping ahead, if you go to content here, you'll see everything here. You're going to have to watch like the previous time I taught this class is recording. Just know that that's not our class, but everything is in here to kind of do. So as you can see, this unit one, what we have is uh, the recordings right here, the Nearpod link. You can either watch the, the recording or the Nearpod. OK, e either one will give you kind of the same information. Uh, this week we have a quiz that's due and I will kind of go over what that quiz looks like at the very end of class, as well as a little assignment that, that's done there, okay? Um, so hopefully that answers your question there on the chat. Uh, with that, this the class does go until, I haven't put in the, due, the end dates, but just be aware that the class ends on the 15th. Uh, I'll just put that in right now. Course ends. So you just need to make sure you get everything um, done there. It's up to you. Um, 
with the live class if you want to or not. Okay. All right. I'll be respectful of everybody's time and we'll kind of move on here of what we're doing. Okay. So what we're going to be talking about today, and let me just pop back. I probably should have done my picture before here is we're going to talk about, uh, careers in education. Okay. Um, there's a lot of careers in education. And as you kind of see, I'm probably a little biased as we're, we're going in to these, um, what's on the slide as well is what you're actually going to uh your questions that are going to be on the quiz okay so when we're talking about intrinsic and intrinsic rewards that kind of stuff um just just know so what we're going to do today is go over basically the pros and the cons i guess a little bit of being in education uh taking these cte classes which it is like college or um, career and technology education, um, you're really kind of looking at um, figuring out if this is like a career field for you. Okay, so somebody asked a question, uh, do we take a CTE test at the end of the block? Uh, very good question, yes. There is a CTE test that, um, that you can take and you can get a certificate at the end of the course if that's something um, that you want to do. Good question. Okay. All right. So as we're talking about education, there's you don't have to be just be a teacher. There's a lot of other opportunities in education, and I've kind of dabbled in quite a few of them. And so I'll be able to, to kind of answer those questions for you. So the rewards, there's intrinsic motivation, which is like basically what um what's kind of inside right inside you kind of what you feel and that kind of stuff uh a lot of people like education because you feel like you're helping people you have that emotional kind of thing as you're helping people improve their lives and get better and that's really kind of what's about but also uh intellectual um in education you are going to be learning a lot right you're going to need to have a four-year degree um, and it's going, and you're going to have to continue to learn different things. And that's one of the things I like is I like learning new stuff, right? Um, it doesn't always have to be like formal education, but I like just learning about like technology facts and, you know, hacks and little things like that, that really make it there for me. And I also like to know that I'm doing something that's beneficial for my community and other people and stuff like that. Some exter extrinsic kind of things that happen is um, in education, uh, luckily, the government funds this at a very high rate, um, like the state of Utah, like over 60% of the state budget goes towards education. Um, so you can find jobs, and there's a lot of job security. And so if you do get it like an educator license um you'll have very good job security and you'll be able to find a job and maintain and keep a job uh another one um particularly for teachers and some other people that work with students uh summer vacation i don't know how many of you guys like summer vacation a little bit right so it gives an opportunity for you to spend time with those with with your friends and family and other people and that kind of stuff, or just go on on cool places. So that is is um, good. Another one's kind of work schedule, right? For me, it's really nice. I have some kids that you saw, and to be able to be kind of on the same schedule as them to get like winter break off together, to get um, hopefully our spring breaks line up, that kind of stuff. It helps there. Um, another thing is you get put on a salary. So a salary is that you get a set amount of money every month. And even during the summer when I don't work, um, they just prorate that. So I get paid during the summer. So I'm getting paid and I'm not really working um, there, but I still get the benefit of what I did from over the last school year. Right. Um, and then also educators usually get uh fairly good benefits right um some of them 
some of the teaching professions are linked to like the state retirement where they give you, uh, oh, what is it called? I'm, now I'm losing my mind. Hold on a second. Um, pension, right? There's not a lot of pensions out there, which basically give you a set amount of money each month after you retire, if you work long enough and that kind of stuff um, until you die, right? So you got that, you get other benefits like health insurance, that kind of stuff. So it is really good to have that stability there. So those are kind of the benefits, okay? Um, as we kind of look at the rewards here, um, we will look at this. Oh, let me see if it's on the next slide. I can't remember. Uh, I should have posted the link in there. Okay. I know it's on my thing. I'm going to grab this on the other thing. So I'm going to throw it out to you guys so that you guys can take a look at this because this is going to be one of your assignments to do is kind of look at uh, these statistics and stuff. And my computer is being really slow. I apologize, guys. And it's still loading. So one thing as a teacher too, right? When the cool thing is as well with being a teacher is like you teach classes over again and stuff like that. And so I'm making like a little note like, hey, you forgot to have this link up and ready, right? And so you're always trying to perfect what you're doing and kind of that craft over and over again. So give me a second here as I get this actual link. Almost there. And it's saying it's refusing to connect. Hold on. Copy address link. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm putting this over here. Then I'll put this in the chat too, so you're able to take a look there. So there is a lot. So this is talking on like a national United States basis of where you're looking at, right? And it gives you all the different occupations kind of with inside education, um, you know, career and technical education teachers, right? You need at least a bachelor's degree. Um, they're looking at, you know, 61 plus thousand dollars a year. Um, as we talked about education, we'll talk about more of that. I do have a master's degree in right. So I'm able to move up in some of those things. So you can see all of the different areas that you have, um, on here. So there is you know it's not like the highest paying job but it's a very stable job okay so that would be some of your rewards or benefits and if you guys have any questions or anything like this as we go through this information please let me know or what it's like being an educator that kind of stuff i've had a lot of cool opportunities so your job description what you're will probably be doing if you're more of like a teacher educator kind of thing is create and teach lesson plans uh keep up with student students progress uh grade papers keep parents informed of students progress um assure students follow rules uh prepare class activities and i've actually been able to do all of those things and, and any a lot more um one of the fun things that I've done before in the past is I actually am a certified driver's ed teacher as well. I don't do a lot of the driving anymore, but I used to 
sit right next to the student and teach them how to drive, right? And so there's those opportunities too. As you're looking in education, you're gonna, there's a lot of requirements. Um, so to be like a paraprofessional, so that's somebody that kind of is like a teacher's aide, uh, usually they want you to have some type of education, possibly like an associate's degree, which is like a two-year degree. If you're looking at um, a licensed educator, you need at least a bachelor's degree, which is a four-year degree um, or above. A master's degree is for like administrators or certain types of specialists. And then there's also ongoing um, continuing education that will be kind of required. So you'll have to like just kind of learning and um, doing tasks there. Um, education in the United States is usually broke down um, into two sections, which we call elementary school, which is K through sixth grade. Um, so it even can start earlier than that, early childhood. Um, and those people, they usually get like an educator's license that lets them teach one to grades one to eight. And then you have like secondary education. So right now, like I have my secondary license, but I also have like concentrates or endorsements is what they call them. So I'm endorsed to teach like uh, this class, like education as a profession. Um, I also certified in social studies and personal finance and criminal um, law enforcement, driver's education. So there's a lot of things that I was able to do to kind of get these more endorsements, which helps me become more um, able to teach more classes and do things like that. But there are some challenges uh, with in education. Um, one of those is just complex uh, demographics and things that you have to go go through, right? So my multi-dimensional. Um, so you're gonna have in one class somebody that doesn't understand anything that you're uh, of your subject you're teaching and you have others that will that will know basically almost everything right and can just breeze through it right and so you got to work with everybody in between um you're also going to have other outside things that happen like has your student been able to uh have like a place to to study at home? Do they have parental support? Are they actually um, uh, homeless right now? Uh, are they going through some sickness or other kind of troubles, family issues? There's a lot of things that kind of go right there. So it uh, takes a lot of flexibility as we go through theirs. Um, simultaneous. So you, you have a lot of things that go on at once, right? So sometimes I have three meetings scheduled at the same time and I need to prioritize which one is the most important and excuse myself from the others. Um, immediate. People like to have immediate things, immediate feedback, um, getting things done right now. Uh, you'll also deal with a lot of parents, right? And some parents, uh, they go from one extreme to the other. Some that um, people have called at times helicopter parents that want to know every single thing their kid is doing and and every little step of the pro process. And then you have some that there's no kind of engagement from the parent at all. So you just have to deal with each kind of side of the coin. Um, unpredictability, snow days, right? Uh, for us online, the internet goes out. I've teach taught class a lot of times where all of a sudden, boom, my internet went out. Okay, gotta throw something to you guys. Um, and then also that's, uh, it's public too. So being part of the government, so education is funded by the government. So we're part of the government. We have to be transparent in what we, we do and what we say, which is, which is a good thing. We get watched there, but you know, we got to follow certain, um, standards that they, they require and stuff like that. So. There are challenges um, within education. So 
There is right here the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics on education, um, which is the link that I sent you. And that is going to be, I'm just going to go over your two assignments here for this week. So unit one, careers and education, you're going to have a quiz. And what I would do is I would keep up this, um, I'm actually going to throw the near pod real quick. I'm going to go all the way back here and I'm going to open it so it's self-paced. So you can actually Oops, I'll share this one. Hold on. So this means that you you'll be able to uh I don't know why it's not letting me do self face. Hold on. Okay, so you should be able to go through all these slides because the answers to these quizzes are in the slides, right? And so let me just kind of show you. So I just clicked on the lesson one quiz. I'm just going to, mine looks a little bit different because I'm the teacher version, but I'm going to preview it for you. And I believe it's a six question quiz, right? And one thing that I do in my classes too is you can retake these quizzes as many times as you want to get the correct answer. Okay, so to be a licensed teacher, you must hold at least a, okay, we talked about that, right? So go back and look if you can't remember, okay? What challenges do features that we did not discuss, right? So if you come back here and just go to when we talked about the challenges, right? Which one did we not discuss of, of those, okay? Intrinsic motivation, we talked about that and extrinsic intrinsic. and then what are the job descriptions so we went over job descriptions as well okay so that's that that first part of the quiz the second part um is the assignment and this one what you're going to do is you're going to go to this website right here that we talked about and you are going to just research one of these fields in education that interests you Okay, and then you're just going to um, tell me that you did it and you're going to put down some information about there. And as I said, I apologize, my computer's being a little slow today. And it's going to look like as soon as it pops up. Okay, did you go to this place? Yep, that's what I put up there. And then write down the average salary and write what it looks like because it's going to give you an outlook of what it's going to look like. Our, our teaching job still going to be around, right? It's going to give you an outlook and there's, because of growth, there is need always. So, okay, somebody asked where you find the quizzes. Once again, go to unit. So it's go to the course right content unit and then you'll be right in there and all the information is either the nearpod or the recording so okay uh let me just go back to the last slide right here share my information with you if you need to contact me uh that that would be a number i would prefer uh email but if you need to um call or text me Sometimes I don't answer right away, but I'll try to do the best I can. Um, but that's all I have for our first class. So I'm going to stop the recording here and then uh, let you guys have any questions and I'll stay after.